Welcome back to another episode of Advanced RC Adventures. A2RC here. This is a channel where we investigate, explore, build and explain, upgrade, and advance Nitro RCs to another level. Come start a new adventure with me. Today what we have in front of you is a brand new HPI Nitro Star T15. This is a vintage engine that you may or may not have seen ran just a small fun short as an introduction to what we're going to take a look at here today. The box has been opened, but we're going to take a look, we're going to disassemble, we're going to take a look at the sleeve, piston, all the internals of this T-15. This is an engine that actually I think is pretty underrated. Um, it came out during the time of the original HPI MT, also with the RS-4 3 EVO not the EVO Plus. The first RS-4-3 came out with a T-15. We're going to take a look at the sleeve and piston of a T-15 um, and another iconic engine to just do some comparison of um, the internals. So let's take this box and um, set it to the side. We're going to open up for the first time the bag just for you guys. Got a bubble wrap here. This is what HPI used to do. Looks like we have a double bubble wrap. And here we go. Do a little spin. These heads are pretty interesting. There's not another HPI or current head that has this type of shape or configuration. Definitely this um, matte kind of silver color um, is similar to the current day G3.0. First thing you notice here is the integrated engine mounts, but they also have the side um, engine mount flanges for auxiliary mounts depending on what car or truck you're putting it in. There's a nice um, 15 symbol down in there. Same side or same on um, each side HPI and uh, a 15 with a little bit of flames down there. I'll take a look at the bottom. So we have our one, two, three, four integrated engine mounts. This is um, essentially the same type of look, a little bit different block, but same type of um, look as the T3.0. We'll take a look at the G and the T3.0 in a future episode. Standard shaft comes with a collet, brass collet. Nitro Star HPI Racing Engines uh, Pool Start side exhaust does come with a glow plug we have a two needle composite carb rotary this is a 5.5 millimeter um, barrel carb high speed needle with a nice brass um, inlet nipple and here is our low speed needle a lot of times your low speed adjustment is on this side on the rotary arm side but the low end adjustment is here so let's get going and taking these apart now again um, what I like to do is take off the, the carb first so we can just get that out of the way and then we'll go through the um, back plate and uh, pull start and then we'll take the head off this is a relatively tall head and pretty unique head as I said before let's go ahead here similar to OS and other HPI engines that um, pinch bolt or cinch bolt is a six millimeter Looks like we have an O-ring, 
might be hard to see on camera, but we have an O-ring down there in the bottom of the barrel. Nice HPI logo there. Look down the side. So there is no other O-ring down inside that bore. Kind of standard pinch bolt. Go ahead and take that um, pull start off. Looks like um, we're using a two millimeter hex driver to take off these um, pull start bolts. So it's always a very good rule or thought before you take your pull start off. We need to stick something in between the back plate and the pull start. Um, there are times that these pull starts have a little catch so that the whole spring loaded um, coiled up um, pull start cable doesn't come flying off. If that's never happened to you before, it's not fun. And um, sometimes it can be kind of tricky and difficult to get that spring um, back in there. So the best thing to do is get a credit card or um, a flathead screwdriver or something and stick it in between the back plate and the pull start and wiggle that off so that the one-way bearing stays in place. So it looks like there is a retainer or a keeper um, so that that wouldn't happen but sometimes um, there are not. So it's just good practice to do that. So we had some hex bolts on the pull start, it looks like we have some Phillips on the back plate itself. Here, let's take a little look at that before I take those off. Okay, so now that we have all those bolts loosened, we'll set them to the side. And um, there's two basic rules of thumb. Now, this more than likely has a paper or a plastic um, gasket on the inside. And you just need to be careful that when you take it off, whether it's a brand new engine or a pre-used engine, not to break it. So you can do a little rock or a twist. A lot of times you just kind of have to do what you feel is best. I like to kind of do a first little twist and then rock it out the best way that I can. And this being a brand new engine, there shouldn't be anything inside. And um, here's a little bonus that even I wasn't aware. So we have our, our starter shaft. This is a little bit different than other um, Toki or Shua um, starter shafts. But this actually has an o-ring which is a great improvement just kind of adds to what i mentioned before that um, these are really underrated engines instead of that gasket around here it has an o-ring similar to what we saw on that 18 cbr set that to the side take a look at the internals So down inside of here, and we'll take a, a look, there is a pin and it has a spring on there. So you just have to be careful that you don't lose that. And that's how it kind of catches on this little portion here of the starter shaft. So let's get, let's call it off of here because we're going to have to get it off of here anyway. One way to do it now that the back plate is off, you can push on the shaft inward a bit and then pull it out and it might be able to give you a little bit of space. Okay, 
So now that we got that collet loose, standard brass collet. The area where it rides on this um, standard threaded shaft is completely circular. Some of them have a flat. So let's go ahead and take this head off. Uses two millimeter hex bolts. very lightweight head while we can let's um let's measure these bolts depending um, on what you have and these are an m two and a half so they're 12 or sorry they are 12 millimeter long and an m two and a half um, size take a look at that head Pretty um, interesting cutout. It's a very different type of design. And if you notice, look at this big upgrade. This uses a head button. So the head button um, is still on the engine. So the um, combustion uh, chamber is not integrated into the head. It's a, a nice looking head, very lightweight set that to the side here so we have our plug still in here with our head button looks like we have one shim looks like we may have an additional shim maybe maybe not that's just one shim there Let's go ahead and take the sleeve out and see if we have another shim. Nope, just the one shim. So let's go ahead and measure that. That one shim. Looks like we have a point one. That's a very, very tight um, shim stack. Only a point one. There's nothing there because we're working with the head button. There's nothing else on the head button. So that's pretty unique. We have point 0.1. And the dome feature in here is um, really open and wide. Pretty nice. All right, so let's look at that sleeve here in a minute. Let's get this um, piston out. So we have our small pin and spring right here that goes and is captured on that starter shaft right there. Set those to the side. We have our piston and rod. This has a captured wrist pin. There's um, a little spring clip on both sides. One oil groove. No um, knife edge on, well there's a small chamfer but no real distinctive knife edge on the connecting rod, but still a, a pretty decent rod. Standard um, bushing on the bottom. Take a look at our crank here. Take out the crank. Pretty standard induction window. Now the, the balance weight here has been um, cut off, so there's um, a little weight savings on that. Let's take a, a look at the inner bearing measurement. We've got 10 millimeter. So both the front and the rear um, bearing inner diameter is 10 millimeter. all the way through there. It's possible that we're not going to take the bearings out on this one, 
but what it looks like is that the front and rear bearing um, is the same. It's possible that the rear bearing might be slightly thinner. For example, if this is a five millimeter wide bearing, that rear bearing uh, might have the same OD and ID, but it might be the same thickness um, or slightly thinner. It could be a four millimeter. We're not gonna go through that process to heat them up and, um, and pull them out. So let's take a look at the sleeve here. Got a nice big exhaust port. Remember these are a side exhaust engine. Got a um, pretty nice side transfer port. The, um, the bevel um, is actually pretty nice here. It's not just a standard port. We have a pretty good sweeping back bevel. No, no um, fang, but a nice big bevel. A nice big bevel on the boost port as well, but the boost port itself, the hole, the port opening is uh, pretty small. And then um, the same on that transfer port there. So, but nice, really, really big exhaust window, exhaust port matches up um, with that window there. So for comparison, what I want to do is take a look at, this is a, um, a Toki 15FE. So here we have our piston. These do not use a captured um, pin. This uses a, a brass or a bronze rod. Got a transfer port on the piston itself. But let's take a look at um, this sleeve. And we'll, we're gonna go through one of these engines in full at a later date. But these are a very different um, port sizing. So let's take a look here. So this is an ABN, this is an ABC, which is um, a great upgrade. That's why I said these T15 engines are so understated. Um, they're, they're, really, they're really nice. So let's take a look at the exhaust port and then rotate around. We have our transfer port. Take a look at that, that difference there. Big opening here on the um, 15FE compared, comparatively. And then if we take a look at the induction window or the induction port, that's really, really different also. So just a big open window here on the T15 and um, this one has a nice big bevel, but um, a pretty small opening. And then let's compare that to, this is a 15, an OS 15 CVR, not a CV, but a CVR. We have, it's a, a pretty similar kind of situation for the piston, one um, oil groove, standard OS um, rod, Let's take a look here though. First we're looking at the boost port. A lot bigger. Let's rotate here. A lot bigger than um, the T15. And then let's rotate to one of the transfer ports. So on the CVR the transfer port is wider but it's probably about the same width um, but on the T15 you got a nice big um, low bevel uh, but on the um, CVR there's no fang or anything on here it's just a pretty standard port but it is um, wider than the T15 and then on the exhaust port they're relatively the same but um, it actually looks well, let's, let's measure real quick The opening is four millimeter on the CVR, and on the T15, it's four millimeter as well. So the exhaust port is um, pretty much the same, nice, big, and open. But that's just a quick, that's just a quick little look-see um, at two different engines that are in the same kind of class. This is the um, NitroStar T15 and then compared to um, the CVR, the OS CVR, and then um, the HPI Batoki built 
she was the parent owner of Toki um, for the 15FE. So it's been great having everybody here. We're going to take a look at all different kinds of engines as we go through um, this adventure. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you like anything 10 scale, anything nitro, especially touring cars, then this is the place to be. So thanks for taking the adventure with me. Thank you.